Hi, I'm Kelsey Braceman. I'm, as he said, I'm an engineer with Technical Machine. We make TESOL, which is a JavaScript programmable microcontroller. Um, that's not really the subject of my talk today, although I do use one. Uh, the subject of my talk is beyond the screen, humans as input and output. And mostly, we've seen a lot of really cool demos here today. We've seen a lot of amazing videos of robots doing really amazing things and interacting specifically with the idea of making the digital world much more physical. Um, but the, the one thing that I've seen about putting things just on a screen is there's some distance between you and the technology. It doesn't feel like something that you can go home and do. So I wanted my talk to help introduce you to the idea that you can go home and try a lot of this stuff now, making devices that interfaces with humans in ways that don't involve necessarily screens and buttons. Um, to that end, I have a couple of live demos up here today, and both of them, sort of to prove my point, were things that I made in a couple of days um, with fairly cheap materials, and they're both written in JavaScript, um, fairly, simple, f fairly simple code. So I think this is my remote. Um, so let's start with why, why go beyond the screen. Um, so we're making a vast number of devices when we make the Internet of Things. And um, this has been the theme that I've seen across a couple of other talks. But there's something really interesting about the fact that we're making so many devices. Um, humans don't have that much attention to spare. They're not very good at looking at a whole bunch or people aren't really good at focusing on a lot of different things. They're good at focusing on one thing for a short period of time. And if you have a lot of devices that are demanding your attention, you're sort of wasting the amount of mental energy you have. Um, so I wanted to talk about moving beyond screens and buttons into devices that don't require any attention. About 20 years ago, maybe longer, a man named Mark Weiser coined the term ubiquitous computing. And his vision was basically a world in which the environment and the spaces that people are in react to humans in a way that's so intuitive that humans actually forget that there is technology adapting the surroundings to them. Um, and I think that that's a really excellent place to aim at. Um, so far I've seen in the Internet of Things, people get really excited about the gadgets. They get really excited about the devices and the things. And I want to try and say that it's important to try and bring this Internet of Things phenomenon back to ubiquitous computing, back to people in an environment. So what does it mean to put humans in an environment? As I said before, humans aren't very good at giving undivided, focused attention. They are good at picking up inputs at, as necessary, however. Um, so we need to start making interfaces that creates calm. And I guess so here's a, that's me in the middle and the different things that I might be noticing peripherally. You can tell whether, what the temperature in the room is, whether it's too hot or too cold. If the wind is blowing, if something's touching your skin. Background noise, is it loud or is it quiet because everyone's listening? Or is the general atmosphere too light or too dark? And what's really interesting about these, all these inputs that you perceive peripherally is that most of the time you completely ignore them. And... Um, the other interesting piece of that is as soon as something dramatic happens or as soon as something goes outside of your comfort zone, you suddenly become aware of whatever sense that is. So that's what I mean when I'm talking about calm technology. And um, I wanted to try and think about, well, what are some ways that you can bring devices to bear, your Internet of Things devices, to, to bring that calm dispensation of information into your peripheral senses. So in order to do that, you need something running calmly in the background all the time and always outputting something low-key that you're able to sense. Um, so my demo for that is, uh, this demo is called Do They Like Me? Um, it's about creating context. So I have these two Philips Hue lights, and they are hooked up to some node code that I'm running on a computer in the back. and they are polling Twitter, and I think you're seeing where this is going. They're polling Twitter for sentiment, and they will read tweets and change to green or red, depending on whether the things that people are saying about me are nice or mean. 
So if it's nice, I'll know that I'm fine. I don't have to pay any attention to it. If I see red out of the corner of my eye, I should know, OK, okay move on. Nobody likes this. So I'll give you a minute to play with it. If you would like to tweet, um, my coworker Tim gave me some very kind sample tweets here. Um, but you're welcome to tweet anything at Selkie Moonbeam at Technical Humans. And um, you can see the lights are slightly different colors. One of them is, is showing the sentiment of just the latest tweet, and the other one is averaged across the last five. So if, the, if one of them flickers red for a minute and then comes back green again, I'll know that things are basically fine as long as the other one's fairly steady and not red. Thanks. <laughs> so um, you can keep playing with that throughout the talk, but don't let it distract you too much. Um, but that's the idea of column input. So I can see that one. I'm not even looking at this other one because that's distracting. Um, but the idea is you only, if you, if you want to know what the information is, you can look at it and say, OK, well, people feel in this way right now. Um, but most of the time, as long as I don't see anything red, I can completely ignore it. So moving forward in the theme of technology that humans can ignore and the end user essentially can ignore, um, I want to start talking about human outputs into technological systems. And I'll start with, um, this slide has a lot of things that most of you have probably seen before, but it's worth mentioning in case any of you haven't. Um, these are things that you could use as a controller, or you could just have them in the background somewhere and have a user not notice them and use, a, use some kind of learning algorithm to, to work with people. Um, so you can see here um, is the leap microcontroller in the top right um, can sense the particularities of where your hands and fingers are. You've got um, the connect microcontroller, the connect is sensing more larger scale of where your body is moving. You can do something as simple as a motion sensor. For example, I'm sure you've all been into an automated bathroom where you put your hands under a faucet, you expect water, and so very intuitively, the water flows out. Um, and even something so simple as a webcam, there's plenty of software in the back end that even open source software that you could go through to use to process input from humans um, just visually. And I, I encourage you to go home and try some of these because you have access, I'm sure, at least to a webcam and maybe to some of these other things. Um, and, and experiment with, with what it feels like to have devices that are observing humans without humans consciously interacting. Um, so the other bit of, of human output is something that I'm somewhat more interested in personally. And that's the idea of electrical output. Um, you can actually sense electricity coming off of humans much more easily than you might expect. And so the, the things I'm showing here is the three consumer products um, that, that'll sense different things. The Mayo armband is picking up electromyographical impulses. So it picks up the nerve impulses from your muscles that tell your muscles to move. Or you have, I have here two different kinds of headsets that'll read your brain waves. Um, the NeuroSky is, is only $100, and, and I've tried it. You can actually, it can read whether or not you're focusing hard on something, which is actually really interesting because it's just one electrode. Um, and I also put a heart on here because you can sense heartbeat fairly easily. Um, and just to show you, I'll bring out um, my second demo. Uh, this is John McKay. He volunteered. He's actually the CEO of Technical Machine. Um, but he's volunteered to be my test subject, and... Um, apply some electrodes to his arm. And these electrodes are placed on his bicep so that you're getting, um, so we have a, an electrode here in the center of the muscle and an electrode here at the, at the end of the muscle so you can measure a voltage drop. And then there's a reference electrode on the back of his elbow just to help filter some of the noise out. So what you get back from that is a very small change in voltage between uh, when the muscle is relaxed and when the muscle is contracted. Um, so all you have to do in order to use that data is send it through a, an amplifier and filter some of the noise out. So that's what I have here on a TESOL. Um, and it's just an analog read being sent in. And you can see this is only 30 lines of code. Um, you can see it move this servo. So, 
Forgive us, this might be a hard demo to do on stage because your muscles get a little twitchy when you're stressed or nervous. Um, but, so, in theory, John is relaxed right now. Now, <laughs> thanks. Try flexing. I think he's not sufficiently relaxed. You're gonna have to think about it. Here, put your hand on the table. Well, as I said, this is sort of a hard one to do live demo on a stage, but um, I'll let you keep trying with that. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's, it's fairly easy. You can get these electrodes. I got them off Amazon. They're $50. Um, we don't actually sell the module that I have plugged into this Tesla. We soldered it together two days ago. Um, but if you like it and think that that's something we should sell, please tweet at me because I'd love to convince our team that we should sell that. Do um, you want to give it one more shot? Here, try, uh, try contracting and holding it, and we'll see if we can at least get a steady. Yeah, OK, so that's making it hold still at least. Otherwise, it jumps around a bit. <laughs> well, thank you, John. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> then you get a bit of noise. But anyway, so that's kind of a fun way to look at how you can get input directly off of humans into a technological system. You can actually hook people up electrically into whatever you're making. And that might seem a little far-fetched. It's not like people are walking around with electrodes on their arms at the moment. But I've seen some evidence that that's the direction that we're heading in. Um, and so I have here two consumer devices and one picture from a research lab. And the top consumer device, this is a baby onesie. It's a company called Mimo. And the green stripes on it are actually not decorative. They are a screen printed sensor. And they can track in real time the motion of a baby's breathing. Um, you have down below, this is the Ohm signal shirt. It does something very similar. Um, it's intended to, to show you which muscles you're working out um, electrically. So you're starting to get circuits on your clothing that can sense the way that you're moving. Um, and even more intimate, there's this whole field of research at the moment called epidermal electronics. And that is the idea of putting electronics directly on your skin. This is really interesting because this particular one, you apply exactly the same way you might have once applied a temporary tattoo to your arm. It's, it's a peel, wet, and, st and stick kind of thing. Um, and it'll stay on your arm. It bends, flexes, and stretches. And this particular one, it actually has sensors for electromyography, which I just showed you, um, it has a coil for wireless power. It has radio frequency, so you can get information back off of it. So I can tell you with some confidence that there's, there's some motion in that direction of getting electrical inputs directly off of people. And I think we'll see more of that. Um, so I would suggest that because these inputs are starting to be, inputs and outputs are starting to be more widely available and more accessible to people, I would encourage you to start playing with these things now and start being ahead of your time and understanding different ways that humans might more naturally interface with, with technological devices, particularly since there's so many technological devices that are coming out. Um, I'll conclude with a final Mark Weiser quote, which is, the purpose of a computer is to help you do something else. Um, so let's make technology that people can ignore and forget about. And, uh, I'm Kelsey Braceman at Selkie Moonbeam. Please tweet at me if you have any questions. Um, I could probably show you a more effective EMG demo, maybe even put some electrodes on your arm if you find me later. And if you want to see any of my code, I have it up on GitHub. Thank you. <laughs>